so uh, hello everyone and welcome back so this is the second part for my transfer learning tutorial in Keras and it is basically the same thing which I applied in the previous video but we'll be using a ResNet 50 network here so if you haven't watched the first video I'll encourage you to go and watch that so let's get started with it so in the previous video I talked like uh, how we can use transfer learning so either you can use a pre-trained network so any network just a VGG16 is shown here we use as a pre-trained network by just using their weights as a starting uh, weight values and then train over that or we can use a network as a fixed feature extractor so we use the network as it is and extract the features from the last layer and then use those features to train a classifier like SVM or neural network classifier another thing is by fine-tuning the network so we freeze some of the layer the initial layers because those will be learning uh, common features and then the final layers we train it so as to adapt to our new data set so this is called the fine-tuning so we'll do this uh, for residual network so this is our VGG 16 network having just 16 weight layers and yeah, this is uh, just uh, to show you the analogy between plane network and residual network the plane network will be stacked one over the other like this simply and residual network will have a connection uh, like in a sequential manner and also will have a skip connection like this so these are the identity mappings we'll talk about it so if you see uh, for resnet this is the uh, this residual net this is the sub block or sub network so yeah so this uh, using this block uh, we can construct the entire residual network resnet 50 or resnet 101 or resnet 152 as many layers as we want and this will be the uh, sub block of it as compared to the plane we'll, we'll talk about this so actually uh, the trend is to go deeper so it is believed that the deeper we go the better features we learn and we build a better model but how uh, and also this is uh, evident from the ImageNet uh, challenge result so if you see okay so if you see uh, in 2012 alexnet which was the first convolution network which won the ImageNet challenge it had just eight layers and 2013 also the winner is eight layers in 2014 we had vgg19 in 2014 uh, we also have google net 22 layers and in 2015 we have resnet which had 152 layers and you can see the error rate here so obviously deeper is better however if you simply stack over the layers if you simply go deep we'll have some difficulty in training the neural network and also the it is found that empirically the accuracy starts saturating and it also degrades so to overcome this residual learning uh, overcomes this problem what happened is uh, this is the result actually if you can see in cfart and ImageNet as the number of layers increases from 20 32 44 56 you can see the error rate is also increasing and same is in case of the image net so yeah so let me talk why it's happened so uh, if we simply go deeper so the gradient actually the gradient if you make basically for training network we use gradient descent so the gradient is not able to flow backward because of the vanishing gradient problem if the layer is very deep it will not flow very uh, deep and it won't learn the network in the beginning layers so they came up with this type of network and what this has it has a identity mapping so in as compared to the plane network we have a function which maps the input so it will have weight layer and a ReLU function here we have the same function plus we are adding one identity mapping which is x here so the reason being is one is we can also add the feature from the uh, previous layer directly to this layer and also we can directly uh, tra uh, transfer the gradient back to this part so if it just travel uh, backward here due to the non-linearity the gradient may vanish but due to this identity mapping if you take gradient uh, ddx of x is just one so the gradient will directly flow to the input layer and in this way the network will learn better so this is the uh, abstract of their paper it also says that um, we explicitly reformulate the layer and we had a reference to the layer input instead of learning from so that they, they have a reference here from the layer input and in this way they, they were able to learn all uh, they're able to win all these challenges of detection recognition segmentation 
and this is from their paper so they have shown on the CIFAR data set that this is the plane net and this is the uh, residual net so you can see that in residual network if we go deeper we are learning better so error rate is reducing and e even in case of the image net in case of plane nets from the uh, you can see that as the number of layers increase the error has increased but in case of rest net the error rate reduced with increasing number of layer and also as compared to the vgg16 or vgg19 network uh, the model size is very less so you can see vgg16 the weight size is 528 mb including the top layers means the fully connected layers and in case of resnet is just 98 mb this is because in resnet there is no fully connected layer instead of that there are some average pooling layers so we'll look into that okay so um, we are going to implement uh, keras uh, deep learning uh, resnet model which is uh, pro which is provided by its uh, developer f francis collet so in this network there are two unit blocks one is called identity block and another is the convolution block so in identity block you see this is the input and this is the skip connection and this in the skip shortcut connection it is just identity so there is nothing no convolution block so that's why it's called identity block and there is another block used called conf block so in the shortcut we also have a convolution and a batch norm layer so this these two uh, unit they form the entire resnet 50 network as implemented um, in the code we'll see so i'm using keras 2.0.7 and a backend of tensorflow 1.3.0 and i will have a data set of uh, actually this is a mistake uh, there are 808 samples and each class is 10 two samples or 202 samples so i have classes of cats dogs horses and humans so right let's get to the code and start to implement it so uh, first of all you can get this resnet 50 uh, model from f called deep learning models this you just download or clone it and there are all this network resnet 50 vgg16 and i already have got it here so first uh, let's just do a test of loading the model and seeing summary so let me do with let me first import all these libraries and yeah i hope it's or i'll zoom in let me zoom in more okay so there are uh, two options here uh, including top or inclu not including the top so if you see the resnet network here first so this is the identity block which i uh, told you so we will have uh, the shortcut connection there will be just the identity this is this code is same as this uh, diagram i showed you this block yes so this block is this code this identity block and this convolution block is this diagram the second diagram here okay so these two are the blocks which will be used and you can see it here the defined resnet 50 and in this um, yeah so this is a, a definition of the network so they have defined first a zero padding con batch norm activation max pooling and then they've called the con block identity block identity block con block identity block and so on and then finally they have an average pool and if you include top so uh, they will give you weight for these two layers that is just flatten it and add the last layer uh, which is the num uh, consisting of number of neuron as number of classes and if you don't include top then you will get up the network up to here just up to the average pooling okay so yeah let's see first so i've imported it and we can call it with uh, include top equal to true just to have a look at it and we'll see the model summary so hmm it's pretty, okay so you, you got it here you can uh, see the summary of the network here so uh, this this is the input to this layer and this is the current layer so if you follow this last layer as we see we included the top so this is the activation and activation is connected to average pooling then this average pooling is connected to flatten and this flatten is connected to the final dense layer of thousand classes so in this network there are total this many parameters of which this many are trainable and this many are non-trainable okay so uh, if you 
read an image of elephant and let's shape the input as per the network so and let's predict let's see what it gives and uh, as i told in the previous video so you just need uh, to give the weight value and if it is uh, there in your uh, system it will load it or else it will download it and it will be in your dot keras folder in the name of uh, models so it predicts it's a tusker 56% uh, african element 38% so i showed you here where is my elephant yeah so it's an elephant i don't know what exactly it is okay so our aim is just to understand here now so if we uh, load the model without including top you can see it that it will not include the last layer and let's see the summary yeah so you see the last layer is just the average pooling layer i mean just the yeah average pooling layer without the flatten and the dense layer so in this uh, if we feed an input to the network let's just feed it and see so the last layer will have a value of something around 2048 i suppose that's in the variable what's the value of predictions so it's the preds it's just 1 comma 1 comma 2048 it's a 2048 dimensional vector okay so that said let's uh, see uh, let's train our uh, resnet model for our custom data and let yeah so let's download all uh, let's import all these libraries and okay and yeah one more thing uh, let's why i added this was just to show you the shape of how the image so the image is of shape 224 by 224 comma 3 so actually it need to be in the shape of uh, number of images comma number of rows comma number of columns comma number of channel so i expand it in format of 1 2 2 4 3 and yeah so this will be final shape and yeah it should be in format of this so let's load this so my data path is in this data directory and there are four classes as i told cats dogs and horses and humans so this loop will loop over all the uh, sub individual classes and it will load all the images and it will store in an image data list so all the 808 images yeah, and shape is here cool yeah so now i uh, will convert this list into an array and let's see the shape so our shape is 808 1 224 24 3 but our aim is to get 808 by 224 by 224 by 3 so let's just roll to axis and see how it shows the shape so actually it's a good practice to see the shape of your vectors after every uh, implementation of any layer or anything it, it gives idea what actually is happening so if you see this if now it's in proper shape of 808 to 24 and 3 and uh, let's define the labels once you've loaded the data we have four classes and labels will uh, first initialize all the labels as one so labels will have 808 values and each with one so where is yeah so if you see here all will be one but we need to uh, give them a category so we'll give them 0 1 2 3 and as i told okay uh, i guess there is a mistake here yes there is a mistake it should be 202 sorry to 404 because there are total of 808 samples 404 606 and yeah so now let's run this and now uh, actually this labels we need to convert in uh, one hot encoding format so we should have a number of output neurons as number of classes so once you convert them in one hot encoding format let's see where is capital y and it should be something like this so all the zeroth label value will be one zero zero and all the third value will have zero zero one and all the fourth labels will have zero 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 one 
okay so let me shuffle the images just to add some randomization to help the network learn better and i don't have a lot amount of data so i'll use the same data i'll split uh, 20 percent as validation data so 0 0.2 means 20 percent and uh, using train test split from scikit-learn library so now we'll have uh, your x train as 646 and x test as 162 and that's it let's uh, load the model so first we'll only uh, try to train the classifier so just the last layer uh, so let me first load the image input it's 224 and let me call the resnet model by giving this image input include top equal to true and went as image net and yeah so it's taking some time okay cool and let's see the summary and you will see that uh, everything is here but at the last layer we have thousand so now uh, one thing is you can get any layer of the network by this command of get layer so by just uh, writing the name of the layer so i need to call this layer average pool so i'll just model dot get layer average pool dot output i'll get output of this layer and then I'll, I'll stack my layers over that so let me call the last layer as that you can call in any layer and you can use your your like network of you can add your average pool convolution even after this and whatever you want and then let me flatten this and then let me add a last layer my last layer will be as per my data which has four classes and then we define the model using the keras model function api we give the input as image input and output as this last layer so let's run this and let's see the model summary So now you can see the output layer, uh, its name is output layer as I mentioned. The number of neurons are just four and not thousand because I have changed it. So this way you can actually add up your, your stuff. So now we are going to just train it as a classifier. But as I told, uh, we have to freeze the previous layers because we are just training it as a classifier. So except the last layer, we'll freeze all the layers. So let's just freeze the layers, except the last layer. And if you see the last layer, now it, it will be tra it saying trainable as false. So you see the total trainable parameters this many. But now if you run the summary, you will see that only trainable parameters are this many. And there are this many non-trainable parameters. 8196 are only the trainable parameters because we are only training the last layer. Okay. So said that, uh, let's compile our model. I'm using a categorical cross entropy as my loss function and I'm using Adam as optimizer. So let me compile this. And then I can start training using this custom resident model dot fit, X train, Y train, batch size, epochs, and validation as X test, Y test, which we got from splitting in the above. So let's just start training and it will start training. Okay. So this is uh, just training as a classifier and one, uh, let it train. Let me open another console. So one more thing uh, you can do is, okay, so let me show you this way. So first let's ev load everything, new console. Let's load it up to here, sorry, up to, yeah, up to the training, loading of training data. Meanwhile, you can see my network is training and the accuracy is improving. It has been 66%. So I'll explain you here this model. Yeah. So in this case, uh, uh, I was using by uh, I was using this input function to give the image input. Another way is you don't describe the image input in this. You just give weights and include top equal to false, and you can use input as this model dot input okay so it's still loading okay it's maybe i am running my network on cpu and it is taking all the processing and okay but it worked so so it's taking some time to load okay it has loaded now uh, let's load this model and we'll include top equal to false
one and yeah <laughs> so actually i have trained this model already here and uh, i will show you that uh, just i ran it for 12 epochs and you can see the network was learning this is the training accuracy this is the validation accuracy but in practicality it, it should not be 12 epochs it should be more hundreds and this loss also you can see the training loss is reducing and the validation loss is also reducing yeah so coming back and model that summary and now uh, one way was the uh, last layer was getting it by name and now since we have included top equal to false and we want directly it, it gives directly up to average pool you can get the uh, last layer directly as model dot output so this is another way you can do in the previous way also and then we add a pooling over here and then you can add your number of neurons i'm adding it a dense layer a dropout another dense and dropout so this is a i am training this network for fine tuning and then i am using final dense layer as number of classes and then i'll compile this model custom recent model 2 by giving input as model dot input and the output as this out so once compile let's Oh, sorry i just call the model compile the model and now you can see uh, the number of trainable parameters sorry other uh, layers i'm sorry for that so i have included a uh, global average pooling here and where is that yeah so i have included a global average pooling then fc1 this one and then dropout this one and then fc2 this one and then final output layer is four okay now again um, by default all the layers are trainable except this many parameters by default in which the network is provided and we have to make only this last layers which we added as trainable and remaining as non-trainable so we added kind of six layers we added average pool one two three four five six so we'll make all this trainable uh, all this layer as false and remaining layers will be trainable okay and now uh, once you have done everything the final step is compiling your resnet model same as before and then starting the training okay and then after training you evaluate it so actually i told you i have done this training already to show you so um, you can see here so it's just a 12 epochs but you can see with time the accuracy was improving and this is the graph of it so you can train it from more epochs and you know more number of data this number of data is actually very less so since i have trained it let me see this accuracy so you can evaluate it on your test data x test y test and it will take some time sorry for that and to plot this uh, this small fun uh, code block is given here and as I've described my first video, you can go and watch my uh, video on convolution neural network in that I've described how to plot confusion matrix, accuracy curve and everything. Okay, so it, it's, take, it's going to take 72 seconds. <laughs> okay, so I'll pause for a while. So yeah, it has evaluated and if I run this, so I can get, get an accuracy of 82%, so that's fairly good for uh, just 12 epochs and a small data set so you can see actually the transfer learning approach is really powerful and it is used in industry by a lot of people and it is used by everybody actually so actually you can watch the first video of transfer learning in keras with vg16 there i have discussed in length about transfer learning some theoretical concepts too and so this was just to show you how you can implement the transfer learning thing in uh, uh, using resnet 50 network and and let's see okay so the previous model is training and you can see the accuracy has improved from 76 to 96 to 97 in just three epochs so yeah <laughs> so try out uh, this approach for your own data set and try to use uh, already the pre-trained models because they are very good models and you can save a lot of time resources using this transfer learning approach and if you want to learn more about um, building powerful models small data set you can go to this block it is by the developer of Keras himself and he very neatly described how you can use a bottleneck features you can use data augmentation to build powerful image classification models said that uh, I guess uh, that is it for this video 
uh, hope you got some idea of how we can implement it and uh, the code and everything I'll, I'll post on my github and I'll, I'll mention the link below so thank you very much and keep learning bye